Hello everyone, I'm Jessie Braun with Fracas Bloom Computer Consulting, and I'm here today to show you some of the new features that are available with Sage version 2018. I am using Sage 100 Cloud, so some of these features may not be available to you if you are not on 100 Cloud. Let's take a look. So the biggest change to Sage 2018 is with the payroll and job cost modules. I want to cover the details of these in another video, but here are a few features. Both have been updated to the new business framework, which means that you can now use user-defined fields and other custom office features, as well as having updated screen views. History is now also being saved, so no need for those quarterly backups for payroll anymore. With payroll as well, you can reverse a check with one click instead of the multiple steps that it used to take. For more info on the updated payroll or job cost modules, check out some of our other webinars. Even though payroll and job costs had the biggest updates, there were some other changes to version 18, 2018 worth mentioning. And we're gonna go through a couple of those. I'll show you some of the examples. So first, one thing they've added is spell checking. Uh, to certain fields in Sage 100, they are uh, now have the feature to spell check. We're going to check this out in our customer maintenance. So we're going to open up customer maintenance and go over here to our contacts. When I pull up the first contact, you can see down here in the notes field, it is giving us an indication that something is spelled incorrectly. If I put a space between 9 and AM, it no longer has the red line indicating that it is a spelling error. Just like other spell checkers, um, if we uh, start typing in something here, it will give us a chance to choose what we want to do with it. So if I type in S-P-L-E-L, -E which is obviously a misspelled word, we can right click and it will give us some suggestions. We can choose to ignore this spelling or we can also choose to add this to the dictionary. This is going to be very similar to any other word processor spell checking. You're going to find this in most open format fields like memos, contact notes, and comments. Another new feature is an improved calendar navigation. Something you might have noticed if you ever used the calendar function in sales order entry is that when you switch the months, it doesn't necessarily switch the year. This becomes especially important at the end of the year because you might switch from December to January and not change the year and all of a sudden you've backdated a whole bunch of your invoices. So now with this updated functionality, you can see we've got these scroll buttons which will scroll one month forward or backward. You can see now this is scrolled to January 2021. Another new feature that some people may like is they added back the ability to just have a toolbar in Sage 100. Um, the new standard view, as you can see here, kind of gives this maximized view with all of your modules and then your tasks next to them on the right. But some people really like just having a little bar along the top, and we can do that by going to the View tab and changing to Toolbar Mode. You can see Toolbar Mode has greatly minimize the amount of content that you see on the screen. This is only available in the standard view of Sage 100. You can take a look here, you can see that you can access your modules. You do have to click change current module to go ahead and switch the module. So let's say we wanna to go to accounts receivable. Now when we open up modules, it's going to give us our accounts receivable tasks by the menu. I'm going to switch this back because I actually prefer the full mode. <laughs> Another new feature is in Visual Integrator. So now in your role maintenance, you actually have the ability to choose who has access to what modules for Visual Integrator. Let's take a look at this. So in role maintenance, if I go to the module options tab and expand one of the modules, you'll see that we have now the ability to allow Visual Integrator exports and imports by module. So you can set up a role so that 
they can access any, mod, any visual integrator job that's within the accounts payable module or accounts receivable instead of having to give access on a, a job by job basis. Another big new feature is Crystal Reports 2016. In any older versions of Sage, you've been seeing Crystal Reports 11 installed. Um, Crystal Reports 2016 comes with Sage 2018, and it is required uh, to be installed to use Sage 2018. Um, one important thing is to uninstall older versions of Crystal Reports before installing the new version. There have been some compatibility issues that have come up during upgrades, but Brackus is prepared to handle that um, as you move to the new version. We've got a lot of troubleshooting uh, tools that we can use to help you get through this. Um, one kind of cool new feature about Crystal Reports 2016 is the ability to conditionally format boxes or lines. So you could say um, that you want to suppress a box or a line within your Crystal Report based on certain formula criteria. This was not available previously. With the updated payroll, Paperless Office now has the option to email your direct deposit or checks to your employees. We can take a look at this in form maintenance. So in the payroll module, you can see here, we have the ability to email a check or a direct deposit stub. This can be real useful uh, for streamlining your payroll process and saving a little bit of paper. The next new feature is in the inventory module. In our setup menu, in warehouse code maintenance, we now have the ability to set a status for your warehouse. Normally, your warehouses come as active status, and we now have the ability to change it to inactive or restricted. Inactive means that it can't be used in any data entry. It can't be set to inactive status if inventory exists in this warehouse or if any data entry or maintenance records like ship to exist. To see where these records, uh, where a, a warehouse is used, we can see this right here. So if we try to change it to inactive, it's going to tell us you can't change it and we can select details to see exactly why. You can see that this warehouse is all over the place. So we definitely can't switch this one to inactive. The other option is to switch the status to restricted. You can restrict things by specific data entry. So maybe you just don't want to have it in sales order entry, but you could uh, restrict it by, uh, or you could still do a transaction entry for that warehouse. You can also set a start and an end date for the restriction on that warehouse. Another new feature is in our vendor maintenance. So if we go to accounts payable, vendor maintenance, we now have the ability to look at our invoices in invoice inquiry. You can see it pulls up a specific list here of all of the invoices. And if we click the binoculars, we have the option to do a selection criteria and do specific searches by number, date, purchase order number, or ship to. The last feature that I want to show you is the ability to apply multiple sales orders to one invoice. This is a brand new thing with version 2018.3, which came out this summer. So if we go into our invoice data entry and we create a new invoice, I'm going to go ahead and select one that I know um, has the potential to add multiple invoices, multiple sales orders to one invoice. You can see we've got this little plus button over here. So I'm going to click the plus, and it gives me the option of all of the orders that can be applied to the same invoice. So if we click apply here, and we also click, click ship complete, it's going to warn us um, that we want to verify our freight amount on the totals tab. And we can go over to our lines. You can see it's brought in both lines from those sales orders. And then on the totals tab, it's got all of our information. You will want to check the freight. This is a pretty great new feature to help you reduce the number of invoices that you do 
if you have customers sending you multiple sales orders at one time. These are just a few of the new features with Sage 2018. If you are interested in seeing more, or if you think you'd like to upgrade, please give Brackus a call. We'd be happy to help. Thank you.